Hello everybody and welcome to this video where we'll be running over the top 5 semiconductor companies. I have really looked forward to this video where we'll be running over these because this industry has experienced explosive growth and are expecting to continue so in the future. So we selected AMD, Intel, Calcom, Broadcom and Nvidia. And as you can see here, first we want to take a look whether these companies are in an uptrend or in a downtrend. And as we can see across the board, with the exception of Intel, a lot of these companies has year to date had explosive growth, more specifically AMD, 192.42% for the last year, 67.56% for Calcom, 38.12% for Broadcom, and 201.19% for Nvidia. So again, it is something that has really had an explosive growth over the last year's time and is a very dynamic industry. You have AMD, which has been competing both with Intel and Nvidia, Intel on the central processing unit and Nvidia on the graphic processing unit. Intel has more or less competed with all these companies in different segments. AMD, as just mentioned, Calcom and, and Broadcom on, on wireless infrastructure and communication. And Nvidia, they are starting to now on the graphic processing unit. So again, really, really interesting. A lot of changes are going to happen in the next years. These companies are expanding their product and service offering and we will come into that later in the video. But for now, all companies with the exception of Intel has had explosive growth over the last year. So we want to take a look at the income part and basically understand whether these companies are earning any money in the end of the day. For this one specifically, I think it's very worthwhile to look at the revenue just to show the magnitude of difference of Intel versus the others. So you can see 7.6 billion in revenue for AMD, but Intel has $79 billion. Calcom, 20 billion. 23 billion for Broadcom and 13 billion for Nvidia. So again, Intel is still the big player in terms of revenue. That is obviously also the case on the net income part. All companies are green, which is really good. That means that they're earning money, but Intel is obviously a, a big fat cash cow compared to the others. If we take a look at the net profit margin average for the last four quarters, AMD actually is surprisingly a little bit poor here with 7.96. Intel, very strong margins for 29.95%. Calcom, 13.74, not so good compared to the industry. Same with Broadcom, 9.63 and 26.58 for Nvidia. So they are really showing good numbers here on the net profit margin. And AMD, this is something they need to work on. If we take a look at the Bini Shem score, it's just a mathematical model that determines whether a company has manipulated its profit. We want that to be below minus 2.22 and we can see all companies are living up to this. They're in the safe zone. On the Sloan ratio, it identifies the substantial part of earnings and non-cash accruals. We want that to be between minus 10% and 10%. And actually here, there's a red flag for Nvidia on 44.67%. So, so a red flag here while as the others are quite okay. So on the overall ranking, we first looked at the trend for the companies and what we saw was that AMD, Calcom, Broadcom and Nvidia are in an uptrend while as Intel is a bit more on the sideways for the last year. On the net income part, all of them were positive, showing good numbers. On the net profit margin, Intel doing the best, followed by Nvidia, Calcom, Broadcom and AMD. Back, we want to check the return metrics and understand how high returns and cash flow margin is being generated by these companies. So first, we can look in the ROIC, the return on invested capital, and benchmark against the industry. We can see here that NVIDIA is outperforming the industry with 22.32. Intel and AMD worse, but still okay with around 15%. Calcom and, A and Broadcom doing really poor here with 11 and around 4.67%. On the levered free cash flow margin is a bit different picture. Broadcom doing by far the best with 46.35. Nvidia again, really good number, 37.97%. Intel also all right here, 27.74%, around 20% for Calcom and really poor here for AMD with only 7.99%. Next, we want to check the balance sheet and understand how strong the financial position is. First, we can take a look at the current ratio. We want that to be above one and we can see all companies are living up to that. Nvidia is actually doing a lot better here with 6.09. On the cash ratio, we want that to be above one. 
AMD is not living up to that, which is a bit disappointing. All the others are living up to that and that's really important because this industry is quite often about acquisitions as we will touch upon a bit later in the video. So we want to understand whether these companies has the liquidity to do any acquisitions. And as we can see here, the balance sheet are really very strong, especially for Nvidia and Intel. Next, we can take a look at the total assets versus total liabilities. We want that to be above 1.5 if possible. And we can see AMD, Intel and Nvidia living up to this. Broadcom close to and Calcom a little bit worse here, but it's not totally bad. On the debt equity ratio, again, AMD, Intel and Nvidia are doing the best, followed by Broadcom and quite a red flag here with Calcom, which has a debt equity ratio on 4.67%. That is something that I don't like to see. Next, we can look at the Alban set score, which is a credit strength test that assesses the likelihood of bankruptcy. We want that to be above 1.8. Uh, eight, and we can see all companies are living up to that. So looking really, really nice and strong numbers here. The Piotrowski score, again, another way of looking at the strength of the company's financial position. We want that to be equal above five, and we can see all companies are living up to that. So overall, besides a few red flags for AMD and Calcom, it's looking really strong for these companies on their balance sheet. So it's really good to see. So back to the overview, we looked at the return on invested capital. What we saw was that Nvidia followed by AMD, Intel, Calcom and Broadcom was the best. On delivered free cash flow margin, Broadcom was doing really good, surprisingly followed by Nvidia, Intel, Calcom and AMD. On the balance sheet, it was looking really strong for most of the companies. On the title ratio, Nvidia followed by Intel and AMD was the best. On the debt equity, it was Close to the same picture, AMD doing the best, followed by Intel and Nvidia. We then move into the next section with the shareholder yield and we want to understand how much value is returned to shareholders either through dividend and or buyback. So if you first take a look at the dividend yield here, we can see AMD is not paying any dividend. Intel really nice 2.42, Calcom the same around 2% and Broadcom really well here with 3.42. Nvidia is paying a small insignificant um, dividend. On the buyback yield part, again, AMD, small nothing specific incel really nice here with 4.99 percent really good number two percent on calcom broadcom has issued more shares therefore it's minus and nvidia has not paid anything at all so that gives us a total shareholder yield where specifically intel and calcom is standing out but we obviously want to understand if these numbers are sustainable going forward so we therefore take a look at the modified payout ratio that shows the proportion of earnings that is paid to shareholders in form of dividends and buybacks and we want this to be below 100 because that means that there's a room for growth so we can see intel looking really nice here with 71.12 percent there is room to pay more dividends and pay back more shares through buyback. While as on Calcom here, you see that that is 200% and that is really not looking sustainable for them. They will probably have to cut some of it back in the future unless their numbers improve significantly. Next, we want to move into the earnings per share and growth, and we basically want to understand whether these companies are expected to grow in the future. So first, we can take a look at the P ratio, pretty high one here with 161 for AMD. Intel nicely with 9.72, so really attractive P ratio for them. Calcom and Broadcom is also in the safe zone compared to the industry average and the same with Nvidia here with 194. Earnings per share growth forecast for the next five years benchmarked against the industry we see that AMD has 35.83% so they are expecting that AMD is going to grow its earnings quite significant in the next years which can somehow be a uh, positive when we looked at the numbers early on the net profit margin etc intel only 8.62 i think it's normal when you're such a giant that you will not have the same earnings growth potential and it tells us a bit of story about the established company here where you will experience slow growth while as some of the other companies like amd and nvidia are expecting to grow a lot more so we probably have a scenario where these companies you should more look at them from a growth perspective, whereas Intel should be seen more as a yield kind of company right now. 
Next, we can take a look at the net profit growth for the last 12 months. And we can see here astonishing 406% for AMD over the last 12 months. So they have really managed to raise this up on a percentage basis. But again, reiterating from one of the first uh, sections that we looked at, there is still room for improvement here if AMD wants to be at the same level as Intel and Nvidia, for example. Intel had a growth, the same with Qualcomm. Interestingly enough, here Broadcom had a minus on 26.03, so that's quite a bit of a red flag. And Nvidia doing extremely well here again with 46.63%. So again, not too bad numbers across the board, but there's definitely a clear signal that AMD and Nvidia are the growth stories here, which is probably also a reflection of why their shares have increased so much over the last year. So back to the overview, we first take a look at the shareholder yield and based on that, we believe that Intel is by far paying the best shareholder yield, followed by Broadcom, Nvidia and Qualcomm and AMD. You may wonder why Qualcomm has scored so poorly. That is because we don't believe that their dividend and or buyback yield is sustainable, while as both Broadcom and Nvidia has room to grow. So we believe in the future these may at some point become a more attractive dividend and buyback yield company than Calcom at the moment. Next, we looked at the EPS growth forecast for the next five years. We saw that AMD was doing really well here, followed by Calcom, Nvidia, Intel and finally Broadcom. On the net profit growth, it was more or less the same story, with AMD doing the best, followed by Nvidia, Qualcomm, Intel, and finally Broadcom as well. Next, we move into the last section where we want to understand whether these companies are currently under or overvalued. And one way is to first look at the peg ratio. Basically, if the peg ratio is below one, it means that they're undervalued. If it's above one, they are considered overvalued. And until now, all these companies are considered overvalued. However, please have a look at Intel here on 1.13. They are getting close to becoming undervalued from the peg ratio perspective. Next, we can look at my own estimated intrinsic value that are based on a lot of different numbers and assumptions for these companies. And basically my fair value with a safety margin, of course, uh, suggests that AMD is overvalued, small upside potential on Intel, Calcom, Broadcom, and also Nvidia are considered overvalued. We can also take a look at the beta ratio, which is just the stock uh, volatility in relation to the overall market. If it's above one, it means that it's more volatile than the general market. And AMD, Calcom, and Nvidia are more volatile than the general market, while as Broadcom and Intel are less volatile. We can also have a look at some other value indicators. One of them is the book value per share. If it's above one, it means that they are undervalued. If it's below one, they are overvalued. And here we can see that all companies by far are considered overvalued, which is really no surprise to me. The next is the relative strength index for the last 14 days. We want that to be below 30 because it means that they're oversold and there is an indication that the stocks will go higher. If it's above 70, it means that they're overboard and therefore may pull back. All of them, there's no conclusive uh, situation for any of them. However, some of them are moving slightly close to the 70 mark, as we can see here. Finally, we can take a look at the red recommendation from the analyst. I don't follow them blindly at all, as they may have their own agenda, but I always think that it's good to stay on the same side if the numbers tells me so. And basically, their consensus price target, which is just kind of like the middle ground of all the estimates, so some will have higher, some will have lower. They believe that there is a downside on AMD, upside on Intel, downside on Calcom, small upside on Broadcom, and a small downside on Nvidia. So quite aligned with my own estimation of these companies. So just to finalize, based on the overall value assessment, we believe that AMD is currently overvalued, Intel is undervalued, Calcom, Broadcom, and Nvidia are also overvalued. That does not mean that they are bad stocks at all. It just means that they have grown so much, some of them, that we feel that they are not a good entry as of today. 
So we just want to say that before we showing our top pick for today, this is a very interesting and dynamic industry. It is seeing a lot of consolidation these days and it's therefore very important that these companies has strong balance sheets. AMD is doing a huge acquisition that was recently announced with Silinx, uh, I think it's pronounced like that, which will mean that they will further compete with Intel uh, on one of the core domain area on the chips part. Nvidia is in the same way doing an acquisition on ARMS. I think it's around 30 or 40 billion dollars of it as well. So a huge acquisition, which will mean that they will move further into Intel's core area of CPUs and the data center part where Intel is also really huge today. So again, you're in a situation where you have the big player Intel, which is being attacked on several different fronts from both AMD and Nvidia. These companies were historically not main competitors to each other, but it's becoming increasingly evident that this is how it's going to be in the future. Again, I would be pretty comfortable with all three companies because the industry is growing. These companies are looking at different market. They are looking at data centers. They're looking at IoT. They are looking at self-driving automotive uh, parts. So again, I think that there is enough room for all these companies in the future. However, they will be competing more closely Intel will be challenged on the big revenue from these two companies and they will have to try to fight back on the innovation part to stay uh, relevant, I would say, because even though they are big, Nvidia has at the moment, at least in my opinion, superior products, but still based on the company is still away from its 52 weeks high quite significantly. It has the highest net profit margin of 29.95% in the last 12 months. It has a very solid, solid balance sheet that can be used for investments. It's very generous on the shareholder yield and it has an attractive valuation on several parameters. We believe that Intel is the best, but you should buy this for the yield. You should not buy this because you expect explosive growth. We also believe that NVIDIA and AMD are very good companies to get into. However, we want to stress that we think that the valuations is quite high at the moment and they are very expensive to buy into. So we will rather wait for a pullback before we put any trigger on these companies. But I think for the long run, buy a share in all these companies and you will get value on each one of them in different ways. Intel may also surprise in the innovation part they want to move into the, the, the graphic processing unit of NVIDIA and try to take market share of them. Are they going to be successful? I don't know, perhaps, but there is still room for them to fight for, for new markets. And I think in the end of the day, as said, all of them will be good purchase. It's just a matter of when to do your entry. I just want to stress again, we are not professional financial advisors. This video is done for entertainment purposes and you therefore need to do your own thorough due diligence before you take any active investment decision. We are here to help, try to provide good content for you guys. We hope that you like this. We hope that you would subscribe to our channel, provide any comments for feedbacks or suggestions for improvement, share the video with any of your friends if you want to. Um, besides that, have a good day and stay safe until next time. Bye-bye.